Hello again YouTube. I'm back with an update video. Um, here I'm doing some testing and um, you know investigating whether or not you know uh, tying to the grid is you know more beneficial than just simply going off grid uh, with uh, some more panels. Um, I have a plan uh, to put at least two more kilowatts of panels uh, on my roof and I've already got the panels and I've already got the um, uh, it micro inverters as well and I'm, I'm planning on putting those panels on the roof so you know looking at this right here you know just doing some testing and right now you know middle of the day and um, you know I'm you know doing some uh, inverting essentially I've got this MagnaSign uh, program to uh, you know cut out you know, at a specific, or to disconnect from the utility uh, at a certain voltage and reconnect to the utility to you know to help charge the batteries if the solar panels are not keeping up uh, with the usage. Um, and as you can see here, um, it's a pretty clear day, and I'm pulling about 930, roughly 930 something watts of power. Um, that's not bad considering I've only got 1.17 kilowatts of power, so 1,170 watts. And so that right there is, is pretty good. And so, you know, the inverter is inverting and I've got some, you know, loads running in the house, uh, pretty high loads, you know, computer equipment, monitors, switches, network switches. I even got my home distiller running uh, boiling water, and that takes about six or seven hundred watts, I think, uh, maybe about six hundred watts. And as you can see right here, um, you know, the solar panels, you know, they're doing their, their best to, to keep up, you know, at you know, roughly, you know, just hovering around just over nine hundred and, and something watts there. And uh, right now, um, you know, I've got you know eight amps coming, eight or nine amps coming from the battery bank. You know, if I switched off this light. Um, you know in the utility room here so you can see that it just goes down just a little bit uh, so when I go you know back into the main house um, obviously it's going to go down you know quite a bit considering you know I've got this light on and maybe a couple other LED lights on too so um, it's doing a pretty good job now if you can imagine that you know uh, if I only got 1170 watts of solar you know, on a good day, and I'm pulling you know that much in. Um, you can imagine what you know, I'm gonna have when I put I finally put you know two more kilowatts on the roof. So you know, in reality, once I put the, those on the roof on clear days, um, you know, I really won't need the utility at all. Um, you know, one of the key things is, you know, hey, I have this thing, you know, again, I've, I've kind of illustrated that in a couple of my earlier videos, that this, you know, during the day, um, you know, I really don't need the water heater, you know, you know, running, you know, the hot water, there is still hot water in there. Um, and I discovered this during a prolonged power outage that really caused me to get into solar and renewable energy that during a prolonged power outage, you know, that water, the water in the water heater uh, stayed, uh, you know, uh, hot and or, you know, warm for at least two days, for at least two days, if you used it, you know, frugally, meaning you used it with common sense, um, you know, they will stay warm. And um, I mean, the water in the hot water heater will stay warm or, you know, uh, it will tolerable enough to take a shower, wash your hand, do whatever you need to do. Uh, but if you're one of those folks that, well, you need a, you need to take an hour-long shower and, you know, um, yeah, then you kind of may need to think about other things. Also, I have a programmable thermostat, uh, so my HVAC only comes on when it needs to. So, um, you know, so you can imagine, you know, once I put, um, you know, those, those two kilowatts of panels on the roof, then, hey, I'm going to be in business here. Also, these batteries here are great. Uh, however, I have some replacement batteries coming in. Not really replacement, but supplemental batteries coming in. And it's going to be a surprise, um, you know, considering the fact that, you know, 
they're not lead acid batteries. Um, <laughs> no, they're not lead acid batteries. These batteries right here will be truly backup batteries. And, um, you know, I've got my system, you know, I got, I got plans, so to speak. But anyway, just a, a test here. Um, and, you know, it is possible, you know, to do this off-grid thing. Um, again, I'm doing pretty good here. And, uh, at, you know, just my bank is just pulling. I've, I've had it running for a while now. And, you know, it's just, you know, pulled out, you know, just, you know, a 5% depth of discharge. <laughs> um, uh, so with a 95% state of charge and, you know, so 5% depth of discharge, that's, you know, essentially almost nothing. And, um, this MagnaSign inverter for you folks that may be looking, uh, about a potential inverter, these inverters are pretty good. Uh, the people that, you know, produce these MagnaSign inverters, these are the same folks that used to work for, you know, a company called Trace. Uh, before Xantrex bought them and before Snyder bought them. So, and you know, these the trace, the earlier trace inverters were really good from what I understand. They were like bulletproof. Um, and just to kind of, you know, illustrate the fact that, you know, this inverter here is, is it, this thing's a beast. Um, I mean, it's huge and it's heavy. And, you know, with transformers and stuff, I mean, this thing is a beast. Uh, and it works. Um, however, it's a, it's still a machine, a uh, piece of equipment, and it's not infallible. And yes, it can fail. Um, you can see there's some other videos on the, on YouTube where you know their MagnaSign inverter did fail. Um, so you know my hope is to someday in, in the future buy a backup inverter uh, that will allow me you know to have at least you know you know one just in case. Or uh, just simply, you know, uh, tie them in together so that they work together. And I can have increased uh, capacity as far as, you know, running watts and, you know, stuff like that. But right now, I don't really see the need. But anyway, again, YouTube, this is just a test. I'm just, you know, trying to weigh my options here. Um, I'm in the process of working with my utility to actually, to legally... Um, you know, feed power back into the grid. And, um, you know, so you have to go through a process, you know, you have to fill out the forms and the paperwork and things of that nature. So you know, I'm still at like 900, just over 900 watts, 926. And as you can see right now, um, right now the, my, it's, I'm in the positive zone. <laughs> so uh, this excess energy is going back into my batteries. So at some point in time, you know, it, it, you know, if, if, if I had more watts, you know, you know, if this was like maybe two or, you know, 2,500 watts or something like that, then, you know, uh, this will, this, all of this excess energy will be going back to my batteries. And so people have a question, you know, you know, what about the efficiency of these micro inverters and, you know, uh, compared to working with charge controllers? Um, you know, I don't know an exact answer to that. All I can say is, you know, these microinverters are very, very, the, well, the ones that I use are very efficient. So we're talking, you know, 240 volts coming, you know, are actually, um, let's see here, 246 volts coming directly from my microinverters. Um, and, you know, the excess power is going right now, yeah, 0 0.06 amps or 0.5 amps, um, you know, going back into the battery. So. That means I'm right now I'm running everything in my house, uh, you know, even to include that that you know that home distiller that I'm talking I was talking about, all of my computer equipment, um, things of that nature. So, um, and I'm off the grid lights, you know, you name it. And I'm gonna tell you, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And as you can see here, um, I don't know if you can see that. But what it is, is that little indication says connect, you know, voltage connect, uh, voltage DC connect and voltage DC disconnect. Essentially connect when the battery voltage re reaches a certain point. I mean, disconnect from the utility when the battery voltage reaches a certain point and disconnect from the, uh, uh, I mean, connect to the utility, back to the utility if the, if the battery uh, drains to a certain point. Hopefully I got that right when I was talking to you. Got, I kind of got tongue-tied there. But um, great experiment, and, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, uh, my, the future upgrades in my system. 
I moved this up here again. I did all of this for a reason. It wasn't really for you know uh, totally for aesthetics or anything. It's uh, because I have to uh, you know kind of rearrange things uh, in my in my system. The overall system architecture is still going to be the same. Um, I just have to make uh, room and so forth. But anyway, all right, folks. Uh, thanks a lot, YouTube. If you got any questions, issues, or anything like that? Um, you know, feel free to leave me a comment. All right, take care.